and in this video, we're going to explore getting started with vocal weight. So in this video, you're going to hear me do a ton of demonstrations and voice modeling. Anytime you hear me do a demonstration, I want you to pause, try it yourself and listen really, really closely. All right. Don't be afraid to try everything a good few times before you move on. All right, let's get started. All right, so first I'm gonna make two different vocalizations and I want you to describe how the sound quality differs between the two. So really importantly, not where you think the sound is coming from or what you think my body is doing to make those sounds, but the words that you would use to say, hey, this is how this sound is different from this sound. All right, so here's the first one. And here's the second. All right, if you want to, take a moment to put down in the comments, what words would you use to describe those different sounds? So one of the first things that people will usually point out about those sounds is that, hey, there's a huge difference in pitch between those sounds. One is way higher, one is way lower. And absolutely, yes, one of those sounds is higher, one of those sounds is lower. But I want us to listen a little closer, right? What is changing about the timbre or the color or texture of that sound, right? So people will regularly describe that first higher sound as being smoother or less buzzy or more flute-like, or even calmer, more soothing. And people might often describe that second sound as being buzzier, rougher, more aggressive, or more brassy. So I want to ask you this. If we had to think about weight, right, heavier or lighter, which word would you use for which of those sounds? Most people are going to say that Ah, this sound is a lighter sound. And that, ah, this sound is a heavier sound. And so that's the word that we use, just because it's a really, really common thing for our students to bring up, right? Often we'll get like, hey, it sounds like that sound is just heavier. That's a heavier voice. Or maybe that the sound is coming from a heavier object in vibration, or that even just in the vibrations of the voice sound heavier or sound lighter. So that's why we refer to this building block or part of the voice as weight, right? It just happens to be something that's really, really common for people to bring up. If other words work better for you, like instead of heavy, buzzy or rough, or instead of light, smooth or calm. If those work better for you, by all means, use them. But on the channel, since we want to make sure that we are consistently referring to the same things and also presenting people with a sort of unified language, that's what we use. Next, I want for us to explore weight in your voice. And in order to do that, we're gonna start with a game. So follow along with me here. We're gonna pretend like we're holding a baby and we're just gonna coo to it. So we're gonna go, oh, hi. All right, in a nice, light, kind of high-pitched voice. Do it with me. Oh, hi. All right, this time, maybe imagine you're holding the same baby, but you're on your way out the door to an event, and maybe you're wearing something really nice, and the baby doo-doos or throws up all over your nice outfit, and now you're not feeling so soothing toward this baby. Maybe you're a little aggressive, and we're going to go, oh, why? Right? Do it with me. Oh, why? All right. So when you do that, can you hear that difference in heaviness or buzziness in your own voice? All right, do it alone and see if you can pick up on that difference. If you find that you're struggling with it, maybe try going even higher or even lower in pitch. That way you can allow that pitch to help your voice get even lighter or help your voice get even heavier. Well, 
while you're exploring alternating between cooing and grumbling at this baby, there are a couple of things that I want you to watch out for. One, on the lighter end, I want you to make sure that you're not accidentally getting really breathy with that sound. So it's a super common thing for people to get lighter and think, oh, hey, that sounds breathy. I'm going to go for some breathiness here or a bit of an airy quality to the sound. So instead of, oh, hi, they might get, oh, hi. So do make sure that you're not blowing tons of extra air when you explore with that portion of vocal weight. On the other end, heaviness, right? I want you to make sure that you're watching out there, not for breathiness, but for an unwanted creaky quality, right? We want to make sure that we're staying nice and clear and buzzy, heavy, rather than kind of creaky and crackly. So if instead of, ah, oh, why, you're getting, ah, oh, why, you might want to fiddle around with that a little bit, try to make the sound clearer. We'll have another video at some point where we explore getting started with creakiness and breathiness and how to manage those things. Next, we're going to explore with changing pitch and weight together in smaller increments. All right, we're going to start kind of low and heavy and then get lighter and higher. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. It can sound super weird. Let it be kind of funny, all right? And while you do this, make sure that you're paying attention to the sound of your voice. Try to pick up on how heavy or light that buzzing building block of your voice is at any given moment. All right, now let's go in the opposite direction. Starting light and high, going heavier and lower. So, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. All right, cool. Now, I want us to experience what it might be like if we were to maintain a heavy weight the whole time throughout a pitch change. Let's try that. Remember to try and keep that buzzing heaviness there in the sound. So, Hello, 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 hello. Hmm, it's a little funky, huh? Usually people find that requires a little more effort. It's a little trickier and it can produce something of a yelling quality. Now let's try the opposite. What if we were to try to stay light the whole time and not let our voice get heavier? Hello, 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 hello. We can't go as low. The voice starts to cut out. So depending on what you want to accomplish with your voice, you might want to kind of try and stay within the same pocket of weight, or you might want to allow weight to change so that you can access different pitches. Now it's time for us to play around with changing weight, getting heavier and lighter on the same pitch. So this is something that can be a little bit trickier to hear because changing pitch does allow us to make such a dramatic shift in the weight or the buzziness of our voice. So bear with me here. I want you to listen really, really closely to my voice and to yours as we do this exploration, okay? So let's begin just with a really, really simple single static vowel. We're not gonna use hellos just yet. <clears throat> Starting off with a pretty light sound. Can we hear that weight start to build up? All right, we're going to go further and a little faster now so that I don't run out of breath. So if we don't change pitch, we can see that weight is really strongly related to loudness. Let's try and go in the opposite direction this time. 
Ooh. All right, and here we are back at this pretty gentle light sound on the same pitch. If you're curious about loudness and the relationships between pitch, weight, and loudness, I'll do another video on getting started with loudness at some point in the future. For now though, let's jump to using a word, hello, to explore changing weight on the same pitch. So, hello, 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 hello. Hello. Right, same concept, you're just pronouncing a word on top of it. So again, remember, try and pay really close attention to that buzziness or the heaviness, the weightiness of your voice. Now that we've done those really basic explorations with weight, it's time for us to practice taking it and controlling it in speech and song. So to begin, we're going to use a really simple process of one, tuning our voice to a certain pitch and weight, whatever pitch and weight you want. Two, you're going to meditate on that experience. So meditating on what does my voice sound like, trying to really ingrain that in your mind. Also taking a moment to note, what are my bodily sensations? What do I feel when I'm producing this sound? And then three, taking that experience, taking that sound and maybe even that bodily sensation into what you're going to sing or speak. So part one, tuning up your voice, right? You can use whatever sort of warm up or exploration that you like to do this with. I'm going to use my hellos and I want to find a lighter, higher sound to speak with for a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, now that I'm here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, before I really begin speaking with that sound, I'm gonna stay there and I'm gonna meditate on that sound that I'm making, focusing on the auditory and the somesthetic or bodily sensations. So, hello, hello, hello. And while I'm doing this, I'm imagining, all right, what does this voice sound like? How would it sound for this voice to speak? And then I'll go into speaking with it. Hello, hello. Okay, so one day I went to the grocery store and I bought two dozen pineapples. And when I bought those pineapples, the cashier... <laughs> and just find something to say, right? So, uh, if you want to sing, same thing. Tuna, hello, 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 hello. You might need a specific pitch. Hello, hello, hello. Then, sing whatever you're going to sing after you've meditated on it. Hello, hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Super, super simple, right? So if you need to meditate on whatever sound it is that you're making for longer, by all means, go for it, right? Uh, don't feel like you have to do any specific warm up or tuning up process. I just do what works for me. You do what works for you. Find that sound meditate on it before you try and implement it okay really get familiar with it the faster you go the more likely your brain is to rely on muscle memory things that it already has saved things that it already does habitually and oftentimes that's not what we want we want something different so take that moment to be really mindful about what sound it is that you're asking your body to make and really trying to get it prepared and sort of in the zone to make that sound happen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to tune, find something a little lower and heavier. So same process. Hello, 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 
All right, all right. So I went to the store the other day, and after I bought my pineapples, um, I decided that I needed uh, two dozen bushels of bananas. Okay, and in singing, hello, hello, hello. Give myself a note. Mm, maybe that's a little low for me. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. All right, same process. One of the number one uh, mistakes that I'll see people make during this process is tuning to a place and then not quite staying there or not quite revolving around the place they tune to as their average. So there's a little bit of incongruity between the warm up, hello, 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 and where they start to speak. So we might hear, hello, hello, all right, hello, one, two, three, four, five instead of hello hello one two three four five which sounds much more the same quality than the previous example did so make sure that you're watching out for that try to keep your speech or your singing congruent with wherever you warm up or tune your voice up to okay I think that it would be good for us to uh, close this video out with a discussion on practice and goals. So practice, what do I want you to do? I want you to practice actually speaking and singing using different degrees of vocal weight. Uh, the best way to learn to do a skill is to spend time doing the skill. A lot of the uh, explorations that we did earlier, such as Hello, 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 hello. Those can be good for exploring your range of pitch and vocal weight. That's fine. But for developing this skill, you want to spend most of your time actually implementing it into speech or song, depending on what your goals are. Also, be sure to listen to vocal weight in other speakers and singers. Listen to voices that you like, listen to voices that you don't like, and try to see, hey, is it specifically something that they're doing with their vocal weight that I find so pleasant or unpleasant here? In listening to other speakers and singers manipulating their own vocal weight, what you'll learn is that, hey, I might have a certain preference for this or that degree of vocal weight in this situation. And that awareness is really, really important. Not only will it help you to decide what you like but it'll also help you hear yourself better. You're gonna be developing that auditory skill and evaluating your own performances with more acuity, more specificity. And last, we wanna make sure that we do pay attention to our vocal health. So specifically with higher pitches and with heavier weights. Uh, those two things tend to be more taxing to the tissues of your vocal anatomy, both the muscular and the kind of mucosal uh, tissues that actually get vibrated against each other. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to listen to your body. If things get tired, take a break, rest. If you notice that, hey, I'm experiencing some signs of vocal fold swelling, you know, maybe I'm getting a little hoarse sounding or losing some of my range or my voice just feels more difficult to use. Again, let your body rest, take care of it. Maybe do some nice, simple warm downs, some semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Right, and that's the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you find uh, this video to be helpful. And yeah, if you've got any suggestions, any feedback, please feel totally free to leave that in the comments. Um, this video series is definitely meant for those of you who have said, hey, uh, this technical information sometimes is too much for me. You know, I my, my brain shuts off, I have trouble paying attention to it, and maybe I feel like I don't need it for practice. So this series is meant to be just as straightforward as I can get it. 
uh, how do we get you hearing these building blocks of the sound and controlling them in your own voice? So yeah, I uh, look forward to more. I'm not sure if I'll do pitch or size next, but it'll probably be one of those two. All right, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.